So now that we have a diagraph, uh, describing the a set of tasks, the tax times, and the order requirements, now we want to figure out how we can schedule this. And so the first thing that we need to talk about is the idea of a processor. So a processor is whoever works on the tasks. These might be people, they might be computers. Um, in our case, it's probably going to be people. And we make a few assumptions. We assume that every processor can work on any task. Now, if I only had one processor, which I might call them processor 1, then they're going to have to do all these tasks. So in a schedule, uh, I might, for example, have the, this person start out with task 1, which is going to take 2 units of time, right? 2 days. And then maybe they're going to start in on task 2, which is going to take them half a day. And then maybe they'll come back here and say, okay, well, I can't do any of these until I finish up these ones. Uh, so maybe I'll go start in on task 3, which is going to take me uh, 2 more days. Uh, maybe I'll do task 4 while I'm at it. Uh, and that's going to take me another day. Notice up here, I'm just keeping track of how much time's gone by altogether. And then task 5, which is going to take me two more days. Uh, and, you know, now I can work on task 6, and task 7, and task 8, because, right, everything that needs to be done before those has been completed. And then finally, task 9. And what we have here is called our finishing time finishing time. So finishing time is the time it takes uh, for all the tasks to get completed. And this is going to depend upon the number of processors and the particular order in which people work on things. And so this will vary depending upon the specific schedule. Now in this case, this schedule is optimal for one processor because there's no way that we could possibly come up with a better schedule. And so this is an optimal schedule. So now, suppose that we wanted to schedule this on three, p with three processors or two processors. Let's go for three. Uh, how long do you think it's going to take? Well, we know that there's a total of 10 hours worth of tasks here. So you might be thinking, well, let's see here, 10 divided by 3, that's about 3.33 days. So is it going to take 3.33 days to complete? And the answer is, well, no, because notice that I got to do task 1, task 2, uh, let's see here, e any of these, maybe task 6 and task 1, and those have to be done in order. And those add up to 2, 3, 4 days altogether, so there's no way we could possibly get this done in less than 4 days. And so we have a 4-day, what's called, critical time, critical time, and the critical time is the absolute minimum time to complete the, the, complete the job. It's defined by this, which is called a critical path. It is the longest series of tasks in this, in, in the, in, in the diagraph. So let's take a quick look at what this will look like with three processors, and I'm just going to throw it up here and I'll come back in just a sec. So here's one possible schedule with three processors. Uh, and notice that the completion time here, the finishing time, is 4.5 days, which is more than our critical time, which means it's possible that there's a better schedule out there, uh, but we really can't tell. Now notice something else, that here and here, here and here and here, nobody's working. In this case, it's because uh, processor 2 really can't start in on task 7 until task 2 is done, so processor 2 really can't do anything there. And this is what's called idle time. Idle time is time when a processor is not working on anything because they can't, because the order requirements mean that they have to wait for something else to get done first.